react india yeah yeah wow uh, just uh, announcement this is my like first conference in india so if i'm like messing up just excuse me and with that, with that i just want to talk about what actually just now they spoke about and that's the whole thing which i want to talk to you about it just blurred it out <laughs> so i'll just give you examples or maybe a demo or something at the end of it but just getting to what quick is maybe we can start like you know a why quick course need all those things so maybe i can just go ahead with the presentation so myself i am sayam kamath i work for a builder io as a software developer and builder io what it does is is basically a headless cms so basically what we do is we allow our customers to use builder to have their website developed or not just the whole website even sometimes a part of it or header footer or anything which they want to do and when we were doing that and we needed certain help from you know like our own developers the reason being when we developed this and when we actually went to our customers saying that hey we have this awesome cms you can do you can use this and put it on your website and this will be the fastest thing you can get it to your customers because we all know right it is better to get it faster to the customer so that the low load time is you know as fast as possible and then customers can actually buy show up click whatever they want to do so what we started was with party town what we realized was when we checked into our actual customers website and we saw that why the page speed is so low or why it's not as much performative we realized that It, it's not going above 50 or above 60 on the code uh, code web, code web vitals from google we realized that it was mainly because all the third party tools or analytic tools like mix panel google analytics or amplitude they were actually slowing down the whole loading of the app so we introduced party down which made sure that all of these third party you can push to a web worker so your main javascript thread is free to do the actual load of the actual application which you know the customer wants then the customers came and said hey but we are doing in uh, view or we are doing in react we are doing in something else so we want to port that to a different language then we introduced mitosis which help our customers to write code in whatever framework they have written at first and then move it to any framework or library they want to when all this was done and dusted then they realized hey at certain point of limit when we use party town we use mitosis to you know transpile it to different frameworks to tie out which one is faster the still the bar of the performance side was not crossing 90 there was still the 10% of the gap which we had they had to fill and that was because the app itself when in real world applications what we see when we go like in you know, actual website where which not just uh, you know small website where there not much traffic there or not many components are there the actual website which are like e-commerce website and big ones they basically have different groups of different developers work on different things on the whole page so it's not just one of like one or 10 developers it's just generally 100 of developers working across different applications different islands of application on the same page and that will definitely push the performance down below 90 or below below 80 even sometimes this is the some of the popular websites which you will see like they are big brand names the closest which you can get to a higher performance is amazon.com which obviously they have like the highest resources of money engineers and all those things to get that much and even they couldn't go about that so why it is so low and uh, it the general questions uh, what i general question what we generally ask is hey how many here want to make their site interactive can you raise the hand like nice right and how many wants to push more and more javascript to the customer like possible right the thing is that it's inverse purpose right if you want to make more interactive you have to push more javascript there is no way other than that right and for that reason you can see that the trend of javascript what we have and this is where i think we all realize we want to be front end developers at some point and then poof we are all started pushing more and more javascript code front end code on onto our customers browsers so when the initial load of the single page application trend started happening right so we had that model of hey we'll load the html we'll load I will the users will see like the white skin of death what do you call that and then we had a whole bunch of javascript javascript happening which make sure what doms to write what doms to give every event listeners to and all those things happening then we execute the main app then we re-render re the whole thing as per where it's needed and then the user sees something beautiful with all the styles loaded and then user can click soon we realized this is not a way to do it because this again doesn't give a high score as i said earlier before so we came with a separate approach which is server side loading what we do here is that we make sure the html is loaded on the server side where all the state elements all the components which are needed as per the route or as per whatever parameters were sent to the server and we package that and send it on the first load 
Then we, along with it, we also send the JavaScript which is needed, which does the job of hydration, where we figure out what are the leaf nodes, what are the different elements on the page which needs to be clickable or event needs to be added. And then we execute the whole app again, and then we allow the users to click on the website. And actually, the click is a functional one. It technically makes sure that a user sees something. It's not like users turned off by looking at a high screen for you know, 10 seconds or whatever seconds they, they end up showing that. But it's still not clickable. When you go to click something, it don't work. But after a certain, on the background, something happens, then it is clickable, right? So for same exact reason, we have a quick. And quick is exact reason what uh, Theo spoke about, right? why it is needed and why it was got into uh, in the list of frameworks what you already have. So what we do here in Resumability is we load the same thing what frameworks like next years do, we make sure that we, ha we have all the uh, server-side state, we have all the HTML, JavaScript, everything rendered on the server first. We package that, and then we send it to the customer side. But then, we don't send the same JavaScript which we sent earlier for uh, to, to run it again. What we do is we send only the necessary one which is needed on the initial load, and then make sure that's it. Once you send that, the whole thing is there. The user can click the moment they see it. They don't have to do the whole process again, which we are doing right now. How we do it? Let's see a demo. Cool. So here is a, a classic example of a counter. And uh, you'll see like it's close enough to React. We, we folks at uh, Builder.io, we love React. And you'll see like it's mostly same, just a difference a bunch of dollar signs, which you can blame Misko for. He likes putting <laughs> dollar signs everywhere. Other than that, this is the this is the running app. And what I wanted to show, OK. Just a minute, I'll just run the app. There you go. So what I wanted to show you here was, you can see right now I have opened the network tab here. And I'm refreshing the page. There is no JavaScript loaded. I just made sure the weight is disabled and made sure the disabled cache is enabled so that we see whatever is actually load needed and loaded on the page. The weight configurations I'm running on the dev mode, so those won't be possible. Those won't be loaded on the actual production ones. So right now we see a button, we see a state of count there, we see no JavaScript loaded. What happens is when the user actually clicks on the button, we see few fo files getting downloaded on the click. And what actually is that happening is the anonymous function, which was part of the click option, that is sent to the customer, that is sent to the client when it's absolutely needed. Before that, no JavaScript is needed, no need of doing the hydration part, no need of making sure that all that is packaged in that one big chunk of JS file or whatever file we end up sending to a customer. We send the files only when it's absolutely needed. And this is not just click or hover, or there are other things which you can keep the track of when to load the files. It's also possible that if we, if the user scrolls, like you see now, I'll just, I'll just clear my uh, network. When the user scrolls and goes to a page where something is visible to them, that time only we get the, all the event handlers needed for this clock to work. Which means, think about the possibilities. Like when a person comes to, like example, like Flipkart.com, they see a bunch of you know, DOM elements there. Everything which is visible is clickable and usable. All the things which are below the fold, which we you know, sometimes talk about CSS, above the fold, below the fold. So this is like implementation of that, but on the JavaScript side, only things which are visible are interactable. And the ones are not, not visible, they, we only pull up the JavaScript only when it's needed. Other than this, uh, so after this, generally, uh, folks ask the question like, hey, that means that for everything, user had to scroll, and we have to download the file, and all those things. Like, this is the most of 99% of the questions what users ask us is that, that means that I have to make sure that everything file is downloaded whenever the user is doing some interaction, right? For that also, we do have a solution, uh, something called Builder Insight, uh, Quick Insights. What we do that time is we check of what are the components which are absolutely asked by the client on the fly. So. This, this was the component which was asked like you know, at the first millisecond. These all are like counted a millisecond. At average, it was called again at some point. Some are very far, so we don't need to worry about them. So what we do is we capture this analytics on the actual customer's uh, side, and we pull that up, and we make sure that next time a build happens, these all are taken into consideration. Other than that, I'll just go back to our demo, uh, so our slides. So as I said, right, we 
love react and we want to make sure that if there is a chance of and if you want to move like don't move but convert some of the part of your application or some of the components in your react to quick as per necessity you can do it by just passing calling a function called quickify dollar and that will make sure that all of the application or all of the uh, component is converted into a quick component and yeah uh, one last thing uh, that was my talk so the last thing i want to share was uh, right now, of a last, uh, recently I've been working on thing called velocity.builder.io. Please, you can scan the QR code. You will see like uh, what it shows. This basically what we do is we do we take the Figma files and then uh, you, you, you know what you can just check it out. Uh, it will be better if you like you know uh, watch it live how it is working. And I ho really hope that you have as much fun as watching and debugging that code uh, like the same way of amount of fun like we had building it. So yeah. Thanks, thanks everyone for listening to me. And special thanks to uh, Sahil and all the React uh, Conf India for having this you know, an excellent organization. Like really appreciate you know, taking time and getting this build is obviously not easy. All the organizers who are part of this, really thanks. Bye everyone. Woo! I still have some uh, quick stickers on the table. Anyone interested?